You're welcome, fellow viewers of Sami SK Football. You're welcome to the Melvin edition of the program Talk Sport on your favorite YouTube channel. It is all about sport, a program that will x ray the sports industry in Cameroon, Africa, and the world at large. Today, we'll be talking the African Cup of Nations. 24 nations gathered in the Ivory Coast from the 13th of February for the 2023 African Cup of Nations. And as we speak, we have eight nations varying to be crowned as the champion of Africa as far as the men's competition is concerned. We have witnessed a lot of drama as far as this particular competition is concerned and a great nation being knocked out of the competition at group stage, round of 16 and a lot of drama. With me, I have uh, two panelists, sport enthusiasts who will be sharing with us their thoughts as far as the competition is concerned, their insight as far as uh, sports expertise is concerned. On uh, my right, I have uh, Mr. Tanga. you welcome. Mr. Tanga is a footballer, a model. He has a lot of caps on his head. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you. And he will be intervening in the French language as well as in the English language. And I have a fan of Super Eagles. So congratulations for your team qualification to the quarterfinal. The Super Eagles, so many people never expected them to put the indomitable else out of the competition. But they did it and uh, they continue to do it. They are playing tomorrow. We will be getting your thoughts as far as that game is concerned. Uh, Mr. Samuel he is a Nigerian based here in Cameroon. You are welcome. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. <laughs> Tangam, yeah. you are welcome. And it is nice having a sport, a footballer in our midst. So we'll start with you, Mr. Tanga, straight, let's dive into business. The African Cup of Nations 2023 taking place in Ivory Coast from uh, February uh, 2024, uh, from January 2024 to February 2024. Your thoughts as far as the competition is concerned as a whole? You can feel free to uh, intervene in French. 2023, African Cup of Nations, what particularly caught your attention? Bref, je veux commencer d'abord en français, bien avant d'intervenir en anglais. Le Cameroun est bilingue, bien évidemment. Euh, bref, ce que je peux noter en fait de cette compétition, elle est ambiançante. Euh, la qualité de jeu aussi est. Euh, il y a des joueurs, de, des joueurs de haut niveau, de très haut niveau, il faudrait préciser ça comme ça. Euh, ça joue bien dans l'ensemble. Bon, on se dit. Euh, au finish, on pourra avoir quelque chose de beau, quelque chose de fructif. Euh, C'est l'essentiel. Bon, Jusqu'ici, on ne peut que croire parce qu'on voudrait bien qu'avoir un football africain émergent, mmh. euh, très développé, sur au superlatif, bien évidemment, il faudrait préciser ça comme ça. Bon, soyons juste euh, patients, essayons de voir ce que la suite pourra nous donner. On a pu voir quelques beaux matchs, euh, euh, de, de très beaux matchs, des belles rencontres qui ont pu avoir lieu. Je ne veux pas certainement les, les énumérer, tous les énumérer ici. Il y a eu tellement de matchs, uh, something like 30 games, uh, I think. Yes. So, so that's it. So, I believe, I believe in this competition. Uh, I believe in Ivory Coast. I believe uh, uh, about all the teams who are playing there. So, let's be patient. We will see the next. Because we have disappointed. For sure, I'm disappointed yeah, about the national, our national team. The Indomitable Lions. Yeah, well, yeah, Indomitable Lions, because I'm supposed to see them going so far. But they didn't make it like uh, they're supposed to, to yes. do. But we have some good players. Players who are playing in the top, in the top league, around the world, around the world of football. So, that's it. And I turn over to the fan of Super Eagles. His team is still in the competition, so he's still flying very high as yeah. far as the African Cup of Nations is concerned. The Super Eagles of Nigeria in at the quarterfinals of the African Cup of Nations. A team that barely scored three goals in the group stage and uh, came on to beat a no-nonsense indomitable Lions who scored five goals in the group stage and two goals to zero in the round of 16. No 
Yeah, I take what particular drama, what particular issue caught your attention as far as this edition is concerned? Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, concerning the issue of what really transpired, there, my own uh, point of view there is that, you know, football, as a French people used to say, le ballon est wrong. Mm -hmm. And anybody can win. Anything can happen. So any victory can be cause of a slight mistake before you realize of maybe making up for the mistake time have gone. You understand? And then never forget that the Cameroonians, they are great players. There is no doubt about it. They play very well. When, when Nigeria won their this thing, uh, when Nigeria qualified into the 16th round, I was contemplating who they are going to play with. But a friend of mine said, do you know who we are playing with? I said, no, he said, Cameroon. I put my hand on my head. I said, we are done. <laughs> we are out of the game. You understand? Only that name is just like, a, should I say, just like a night nightmare to us. Because no doubt about it, there are so many legends in, in Cameroon football team. You understand? Yes. So, it quite unfortunate it happened that uh, the Super Ego defeated the Indomitable Lion. So, it's just that... It's just a slight opportunity that they had, and then the super eagle use it and then take the victory. That's all I want to say. Uh, Samuel, before we give the mic to uh, Mr. Tanga, what particular team were you expecting to still be in the competition? But unfortunately, they are out of this uh, edition. What particular team? A lot of great teams have crashed, but which one really, uh, you know, hit you the, the most? Um, the one that I was so surprised and so shocked about them was the day before yesterday, that is South Africa and um, Morocco. Morocco, yes. Yeah, I was so interested to watch that that uh, that match. Understand? I was hoping that the Moroccos they are going to win the the South African. But to my <coughs> surprise, they trashed them. <coughs> is it was it two zero? Yeah. Yes. It was two zero that they trashed the the Morocco. They even gave the Morocco this thing. Penalty, but they were unable to score. That's to show that the sign, the the this thing. That's to show that the lock was not on their side. And South Africa scored the last goal in the dying minute, a free kick. Yeah, that, that was that was that was truly wonderful. The lock was on their side. The lock was. I never expected South Africa to win that game. To be honest to you, I never expected South Africa to win that game. And again, the people that are, are I never I never knew that they were going to qualify where they. Where they are Ivorians. Yes. Yeah. God was really on their side. <laughs> God was, was really, really on their side. side. Maybe, maybe God really know the reason why uh, he he allowed them maybe to qualify into another round. But we believe that maybe if they try their best, uh, I'm saying it with enough confidence, maybe they will play final with us. I'm saying it with my features. <laughs> they play final with the Super I Eagles. like the faith Nigerians <laughs> have for their Super Eagles. And uh, Tanga, you are a footballer. You have played in so many countries. You have gone around the world as far as football is concerned. Let's come to Cameroon. Yeah. You watched the competition. Yes. What particular thing you saw lacking the team that made them scratch out of the competition at a premature stage? What went wrong? Give me a particular name of a team. Uh, I mean Cameroon. Cameroon. Case study Cameroon. What went wrong what in happened? the Cameroon team that made them to leave the competition? I don't the even final? know what to say because when I'm watching the the, the first game, the three first game, the group stage. Yes. Um, Cameroon played so well. The first game against Guinea, Conakry. Yes, against Guinea. Uh, the second game uh, against Senegal. Senegal. The champions of Africa was supposed to be a tie game. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not it's not easy. Uh, the third one against uh, Gambia, Gambia we yeah. did it well. Very we play, well. Uh, we did it well. We win the game. I didn't expect it. Our <laughs> qualification for sure after the two first game. It was like passing through the eye of a needle. It wasn't easy. <laughs> so that's and it. It was popular amongst Cameroonians. <laughs> I saw Sami Eto jubilating out yeah. there in Ivory Coast. Yeah. So when I'm watching uh, the three first game, uh, we try our best. Uh, when uh, we play with uh, 4 3 3, yeah. I don't know uh, the first one, even the, the, the second one. The first 3 3 with the whole Jamie Field. 
Mm, yes. uh, the third game, we played with a three centre back, uh, something like four in the middle, two in the central midfield, and um, also something like uh, three in front. Yes. So we we try our best against Gambia, but uh, the coach wanted to 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 do the same formation against uh, Nigeria. Nigeria the four, but uh, three, Nigeria is a team we are playing where they are so strong. And Nigeria probably use the four three three to win. Cameroon. Yeah, Nigeria use the four three three with the whole team midfield, two in front, like a box to box. Mm -hmm. So I, I know the system. That is my best formation. Since um, I started football, the 4 3 team with the whole GML fit. So, Nigeria is a team I, I know very well the way they are playing. They are strong, they are very fast. So, it was not easy for Cameroon to, to do their best, to do the, like we want. So, like uh, we know them. So, I don't even know what to say about Cameroon, but uh, I'm disappointed for uh, once again. I'm disappointed about about the performance. Uh, Ms. Uh, Tanga, you are a footballer. Yeah. You are a Cameroonian. Yeah. And uh, we are in Cameroon. All of us, we know what Cameroonians think about the national team as of the moment. Some say uh, the coach of the national team didn't do his, do uh, did his work as far as uh, bringing in the right talents to defend the national colors and uh, it started when he caught up the 27 man to uh, represent the country leaving out key players such as uh, 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 Fai Collins yeah. and uh, you can name the rest. So do you think the coach is to be blamed or the players who are the executors of whatever plan the coach gives them? Who, who is to be blamed for Cameroon's uh, 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 problem? As far as football is concerned. Je pense que ici, en fait, on ne va pas mettre tout le tort euh, sur le coach. Mm. Euh, c'est un technicien, certes, c'est quelqu'un euh, qui a une très grande responsabilité. C'est un technicien, il a joué au haut niveau. Euh, il se doit par la suite d'appeler en fait les hommes, euh, les hommes aptes. Mm -hmm. euh, Le truc en fait avec l'équipe nationale du Cameroun, c'est au niveau euh, des hommes. Il faudrait réellement des hommes ayant l'aptitude, euh, une aptitude requise pour pouvoir faire ce qui est. Euh, mmh. Du moment où euh, vous ne vous retrouvez en train de mettre les joueurs où il se doit, euh, dont les normes vont se retrouver en train d'avoir des petits, des petits soucis, des petits lapsus. Et ce qui va nous coûter certainement euh, une qualification ou alors euh, de jouer euh, le top 4 ou le final 2. Ou uh, so, something like that. Mais bon, c'est un peu euh, dans ce sens-là. Je me dis, euh, en football, on peut accuser le joueur d'abord, particulièrement. Le joueur, mm -hmm. oui, le joueur. Parce que certainement, il ne fait pas le job qu'il faut et comme ça se doit. Bon, c'est un peu euh, dans ce sens-là. Le coach aussi, certes, bon, je ne vois pas, il a mis le meilleur. C'est vrai, il a roté, il a tellement roté, il a roté les joueurs, il a roté même au niveau des systèmes de jeu. Je vais essayer de prendre depuis la trêve internationale jusqu'à la qualification de la Coupe du Monde 2026 aux états unis yes. euh, Il a tellement roté, il a utilisé un 4-3-3, une pointe basse, 4-3-3 avec une pointe haute, il a utilisé un 3-4-3. Bon, oui, il y a tellement de systèmes de jeu. Euh, on se dit il est en train de chercher certainement quelque chose qui pourra donner quelque chose, un truc émergent pour l'équipe nationale. Euh, le Cameroun, c'est 5 étoiles à Nord. Alors, je pense que nous sommes à la deuxième position sur le plan continental. Ah oui. ouais, après l'Égypte qui a 7 étoiles. Mm -hmm. Bon, ce n'est pas donné, c'est quelque chose qui pèse. Ça, ça pèse énormément, c'est une grosse frustration. On a, et on, on se dit, bon, on va se donner les chances dans les années à venir ou dans les mois à venir. Je pense qu'il y a les matchs de qualification de la Coupe du Monde d'ici mars. Mmh. On, on va pas, il ne faudrait pas qu'on essaie de brusquer les choses. Il ne faudrait pas qu'on se retrouve un peu au même niveau que la Gambie ou alors le Kenya. On doit toujours rester le Cameroun, mais au top de l'Afrique. Ce n'est pas parce qu'on a perdu un match de, de 16e de finale de la Coupe d'Afrique qu'on va, on va maigrir. C'est le lion, le lion reste le lion et il est le king. As they say the lion is the king, but uh, let's hope that the lions of Cameroon, they bounce back to conquer the terrains that they have lost so far as the football terrain is concerned. And uh, Samuel, 
uh, the Super Eagles, when anything team is playing against the Super Eagles, it is a big game as far as uh, any competition is concerned. Angola and uh, Cameroonians, when they were playing, it was the same thing, the social media was not addressed with several posts targeted, uh, uh, you know, posts towards some particular individual. Let's look at the Super Eagles of Nigeria. That team that is producing the results now. Did you expect the team to produce such results uh, at the end of the first stage of uh, the uh, competition? I mean, the end of the group stage. Did you expect them to even beat Cameroon? I never expected them to beat Cameroon. I never expected them. But all, uh, all I can say is that um, maybe the, as I've told you before yes. in your first interview that you interviewed me, all I say is that they have to put more effort and put more strength and push more forward for them to realize they are good players and they play very well and they, they concentrate very well to play. The problem is that the energy was not there. Yes. The energy was not there when and they starting. Yeah, when they play when they played against the the Africa Coast that they play one one. You understand? Uh, uh, against Equatorial Guinea. Yeah, against Equatorial Guinea. The energy was not there. But what I saw last time shows that there is yeah, bounce back and yeah, super are, eagle. Yeah, and I very, very seen well. on social media, Nigerians are saying the only thing they know about Cameroon is Cameroonian pepper. <laughs> Can you tell me something <laughs> about that? <laughs> Uh, you know, most of your brothers have been there. Yes. As you say, this uh, this my brother here too. He can Tanga. testify. Yes. You understand? He can testify to that that maybe they are using it. They are just using it like a joke. You understand? Because a guy was was bragging, sending me a message saying that uh, the uh, uh, Pepe Rep Republic are going to play with the Generator Republic. <laughs> <laughs> who is the Generator Republic? <laughs> Nigeria. Nigeria, you know we don't. Hey, the You know, you know there is a popular saying that uh, that uh, you people's pepper is very very good. Yes. Vo piment, c'est très très Yeah, you know, pepper is a piment. Ça se vend, ça se vend au Nigeria. Mm. Beaucoup d'argent. Yes. So. So that is what really happened. And, but I believe and, with this and energy, and the guys used the pepper on Cameroon. And Cameroon <laughs> received the real pepper so, on that day. So going back to what we were saying yes. concerning the Angola, if you check Angola's uh, this in March, um, it's going to be difficult. I won't lie to you. Let's forget about sentiment or being a patriotism. Let's say the truth. Let's be frankly, it's going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard. But I strongly believe that we are going to win them. Yes. That is, that is what I that is what I strongly believe that we are going to win them. And you remember, uh, Angola won its last match three goals to zero. Eh? Yeah, and that is, uh, the team they have good strikers. Yeah, <laughs> they, they have they have wonderful granted. striker. Not uh, not uh, not for I'm not forgetting about that. But well, we are going to win them. I have the confidence in me that we are going to win them. And uh, that will be a very tight game tomorrow, Friday, in the uh, quarterfinals of the African Cup of uh, Nations. We still have eight nations in the uh, uh, competition. As of the moment, we have Angola, we have uh, Nigeria, who recently won Cameroon, and we equally have uh, Guinea, uh, who, who recently uh, won Equatorial Guinea, and we equally have Democratic Republic of uh, Congo, and uh, we will boot out Egypt. We have uh, Cape Verde, who will boot out uh, Mauritania, Mauritania, and Cote d'Ivoire, <laughs> who surprisingly Senegal. are still in the competition after beating out defending champion Senegal out yeah. of the competition. So it will be a very difficult one as Mali quality, uh, beat out uh, Burkina Faso out of the competition. And Mali is another team that is, uh, you know, drawing a lot of attention. So many people didn't expect Mali to be at this level of the competition. Let's look at some of those small teams that uh, we were not expecting to be in this particular stage. I'll just name them. Which particular team do you think was not uh, supposed to be at this stage of the competition? Looking at uh, the various, uh, you know, characteristics that we put in front before the start of the competition. Uh, we have teams like uh, Mali, Kevet, and so on. Which team, uh, Tanga, do you think, think was not, according to you, supposed to be? I think that in our days, in fact, there is no small team. 
Donc, il y a un Il n'y a plus de petite équipe. Le ballon est devenu quelque chose de très développé, en fait. Euh, la petite équipe n'existe plus. Chacun essaye un peu de se booster du mieux. Question à évoluer. Euh, question à faire quelque chose de plus, quelque chose de mieux. Euh, C'est comme j'ai eu à le dire un peu plus tôt. On a vu l'équipe du Cap Vert qui a été... Euh, émergent depuis 2013 lors de sa, de sa Coupe d'Afrique, sa participation à la Coupe d'Afrique en Afrique du Sud. Yes. Mm -hmm. euh, depuis 2013, c'est une équipe qui essaye, en fait, qui nous a montré quelque chose de bien, qu'elle pouvait composer, elle pouvait garder le ballon dans différentes zones, que ce soit la base, que ce soit la construction, jusqu'à la finition. Bah, très confiante elle est. Euh, c'est une équipe qui joue dans le collectif avec euh, des individualités quand même euh, très intéressantes. On va dire ça comme ça. L'équipe du Mali, elle a toujours été, euh, même dans les équipes jeunes, elle a toujours été euh, très imposante, très confiante. Euh, elle a toujours fait le job qu'il faut. Euh, bon, c'est un peu ça. Lorsqu'on vient jouer, c'est vrai quand même que sur le papier, on donne toujours euh, les outsiders, on donne toujours euh, les, les favoris. C'est quelque chose qui a toujours existé, mais bon, euh, le ballon est rond. Ça joue dans un rectangle. Uh, no, I have a to go see, and then, and then, and we had 24 nations in Côte d'Ivoire at the start of this particular competition. We have just eight countries at of the moment. Yeah. Which two countries do you see playing the finals? No, for me, I'm giving um, a lot of points to South Africa. South Africa played South Africa, I believe on them because mm -hmm. uh, it's a team who are playing very well. Yes. Uh, they're knocking so well the ball inside the park. So they're very fast, a lot of speed. Uh, so they're marking so well, uh, very hard. Uh, it's a proof when, when they beat uh, Morocco yes. last time. Is a, that was a big game because uh, South Africa is the only, only country was inside the G the G20. Yes. No, the G20. Yeah, yeah, on the them, side. Yes, we Russia, Brazil. Yeah, G20 mean, the only country in Africa, in Africa. inside the G the, the G20. They also have uh, the, the best player of the year, uh, inter intercontinental uh, clubs. From my ma, ma melody, song. no, Helali, no. okay, okay. Pesito, Pesito. Okay, Pesito, he's a South African, he's a South African uh, player, yes, Jesse number 10, yes, yeah. So, uh, they also have uh, the president of the confederation, uh, the CAF, uh, Mr. Patrice Muchepe. So, all those things, I think, they are giving a lot of power, <laughs> uh, yeah, on this team. I'm, the, I'm, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> For sure. Uh, and the team, South Africa is a uh, team that most of its players are made up of uh, players play playing the local league out there in South Africa. For Mamelo de Sondans, uh, uh, the last game, eight, 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 eight players who beat uh, Morocco the last time. Yes. Eight of them. And the man of the match was equally a player from Mamelo de Sondans. Mamelo de Sondans. I speaking. know very well the team because uh, I, went, I was in South Africa. I was in South Africa. I spent some time in South Africa. So I know very well the way they are playing. I'm not just talking. I'm not just uh, watching them on TV. No, I know very well. Even my melody song uh, I spent some time with them. So I have a, a lot of experience about that, about the team. Okay. Even many players, William, the captain, is a man who we share some time uh, inside the park. So you, you you know what he can do when he comes to no, football. No, yeah, he's a he's a, he's a big uh, he's a good uh, goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. He's a good goalkeeper. So it's been a while for today. So he's supposed to have a big experience. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's look at the teams in the. Well, I did, uh, I, did, I, did, I, did, I did give the second oh, one. Yeah, the second team. Yes, yes, the yes, first yes, one is South Africa. Africa. Yes, the the other team. I'm seeing also Nigeria. Who can do something good because, like I say earlier, Nigeria is a good team. I know in Nigeria, I play with them. I was in Nigeria, yes, about some issue, football issue, also. So, even in South Africa, I try to deal with them because in South Africa, they are, they are dealing with big team, Orlando Pirate, also, they are dealing with big team there. So. I signed a contract with, um, with the Nigerian people. I signed a contract there in South Africa. 
mm -hmm. and um, they're supposed to, to to give me a good hold about my my future so they put me a contract about um, they're supposed to manage me so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um, the, the second one i'm i'm seeing the nigeria team but even if very coast can do something even if very coast can do something uh, i'm believing on them they are playing home the 12th man can, can do something. And they have a home for support. You no, know, that's what I'm, I'm talking about, the 12th man. <laughs> okay. The 12th man can do something very, very, very big for them. That is, that is, that is home advantage. The home advantage. The, no. the 12th man, that means 11 player on pitch and the fans are number 12 player. Okay. Uh, you know, <laughs> in every situation uh, somewhere, there's always the news behind the news. So yeah. let's look at the African Cup of Nations. What particular controversy have you had so far that uh, you think we can discuss on this platform? Uh, mm. Either from any side, Cameroon, we know we have our own. They say our mascot has been abandoned there in uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Some players are resigning. Any uh, and, you know, of those backside news which uh, we can discuss? Well, the only backside uh, news that I heard was... Uh, when uh, it was say that uh, he was he was uh, he was using the players to test their patriotism you understand to know how loyal they are to they the are. nation yeah to nation and again uh, goes uh, goes to uh, andre onana he's a he's a very good player yeah i myself i'm a supporter of manchester united where he's where he play yeah. he's a very good goalkeeper but all I have to say is that he would have done more better in the half cup, cup of nation. But I see that maybe he was no more relaxed. Onana is a very good player. No, there's no doubt about it. He's a very good player. He would have done more about <coughs> it. You understand? Mm -hmm. But all those all those threatening and all those what people were talking around, maybe it was a thing that discouraged him. But no matter what, a great player remains a great player. And some people were like accusing him since he's used to collecting goals every week in Manchester United. He came to African Cup of Nations and <laughs> the spirit was following him. Now, according to some, uh, you know, some football upon it. But all the same, that's football. Some days, yeah, good days. Some days, it's just like the way yeah. it was for Andre Onana. Any backside news that you think we can share? Uh, some players are already resigning, announcing their retirement, and the rumors of some other players, which is yet to be confirmed. Uh, you know, before the game against Nigeria, some people came up with a news that uh, Jack Clinton has resigned, which Jack Clinton denied. Abubakar said, We are yet to confirm that, but I know he's not yet, uh, uh, he has not yet resigned. and. Other players as well, they are on social media that they have resigned. So the only player I heard about the uh, retirement is uh, international retirement is Kyle Toko Nkambi. Mm. The only player. Any I reason for his retirement? I don't. I don't even know. I can't. I can't say. But the, the, the man is still on his form. He's still in his form. He's so why? Why is he he's retired? playing soldier? I think for now, maybe thinking it's not uh, maybe it's tired 31 year old for now i think it's a lot so at 31 know, years so, oh. so and, uh, no, i'm talking experience. about football i don't you're talking age. about football age yeah. football 31 age. you you're 31 31 year old is but some, that's some, one other thing too much. is it proper for players when going on retirement announce at their retirement or they should just go go low as other players have been doing is it normal for players to say i've retired uh, uh, je pense que uh, uh, chacun a son a, a un libre choix mm -hmm. la liberté d'expression existe en fait surtout lorsqu'on choisit uh, mm -hmm. jouer au football yes. on est libre en fait de prendre des décisions uh, et assumer par la suite Si un joueur se porte garant, peut-être après une mauvaise performance de, de sa sélection lors d'une compétition internationale ou continentale, bon, certainement il a ses raisons, ou alors il s'attend à ce que le chef de l'État euh, puisse euh, faire un rappel 
euh, voilà pour euh, redemander ses services par la suite mm -hmm. bon c'est possible mais pour ça il faudrait bien être euh, superlatif euh, au niveau de la performance il faudrait être vraiment bien il faudrait vraiment bon bon c'est un peu dans ce sens là moi je ne culpabilise pas ceux qui euh, ceux qui le font et ils ont leur raison puis voilà, mais pour nous, je pense que c'est pour tout cas Toko et Kambi, j'ai eu à suivre ça dans Allée les Lions. Yes. Euh, pour moi, en fait, l'équipe nationale est en train de se forger. C'est un nouveau coach, c'est vrai, il nous a qualifié pour le mondial, il a joué une Coupe du Monde, maintenant il va en Coupe d'Afrique. Il peut continuer tout comme on peut donner la place à quelqu'un d'autre. Mais pour un joueur, en fait, d'exister par la suite, c'est pas, pas commode. Parce qu'on a besoin de tous les joueurs, ceux qui sont là, on a besoin d'eux d'abord pour le moment, que ce soit en esprit, parce que juste en esprit d'abord c'est quelque chose. Maintenant c'est au sélectionneur de prendre la décision finale par la suite, à dire que bon, j'aurais besoin des services de X ou de Y pour, pour la suite et les échéances. Et puis voilà, c'est un peu ça. Tokal, Toko et Kambi, il est très bon vitesse d'exécution. C'est quelqu'un qui va très vite en fait sur le côté. Quelque part, il est, il, est pour autant, il est pour autant imposant, il est plaisant dans le jeu. Mmh. Bon, c'est quelqu'un qui pourra certainement nous aider dans le futur. Euh, moi, c'est quelqu'un que je mets toujours en fait dans mon 11. S'il faudrait que je fasse un 11, ma starting 11, if I want to do a starting 11, sometimes I put him also in. Because he, he has uh, something, uh, something special yeah, on friends, him. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He has uh, that good speed. Yeah, but he, he's doing well inside the, inside the pitch. So, um, so well, I can say it, uh, I'm confused about his retirement, for sure. I will just hope uh, <laughs> the President of the Republic called him as he did one time with Samuel Eto. And if it's your first time uh, linking up with us, make sure you hit the subscribe button. This is Sami SK Football. We are talking sports on the program Fox Sports. And I have with me Tanga. And I have uh, on my left uh, a diehard fan of the Super Eagles, Mr. Samuel. And Samuel, before we look at the various teams for you to give your, 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 your scores for the uh, quarterfinal stage of the African Cup of Nations, uh give me a team we support the club you support out there in europe or any uh, anywhere else what particular club do you support yeah so i'm a man united fan. my united yeah. okay your own club uh tanga in england yes city for now even city. united okay even united okay african cup of nations we have seen great players great performance yeah. which particular a player, do you think, from the African Cup of Nations, Samuel, do you think should be called up for, to, uh, you know, fit up one or two patches in your, uh, your team, uh, Manchester United? Which particular player have you seen that this player is good for Manchester United in this competition? <laughs> there, there is already a rumor going around concerning uh, Osime, Victor Osime, okay. going to England. But I prefer him not to go to England now because... England is somehow going to bench his career for now. I think that he should continue there in uh, this thing, in the Italy. Let him continue first in the Italy. I competition think, England is huge. Yeah, competition there is much. Let him continue there in Italy. After some time, he will now come back to England. Although there was a rumor that uh, even Chelsea want to sign him. But I have not yet confirmed about that. So you understand. So that is it. I think he's the only one that I'm seeing there. And also this, uh, this... This guy to look man, the guy plays very well. I think the the Europeans are also eyeing him. I don't know, but it's for Victor Shime that I have a full information concerning concerning that. So that is it. Okay, he's the best player of the year. So. Victor Oshime yeah. in your team, Manchester United. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's your vision. I think in Manchester United you? for now near the midfield, the central midfield. Yeah. Now particularly the midfield, the near the midfield. Yeah. Uh, and and you you have watched the African Cup of Nations. Which player from any team do you think can fit in in your yeah, choosing club? Mm, well, if I want to to compare a player uh, in calf competition, uh, I will compare them with with me. Firstly, 
<laughs> when I'm watching me play. Yeah, okay, yes. <laughs> yeah for sure I'm getting the tour because I, I know I know the, the CAF competition. Yes. Because I was in Arctic uh, in 2019, I was in CAF in CAF competition uh, with New South Dwala. Uh, yeah, because um, um, I ended uh, my formation uh, with Kadispo Academy in that time. So they called me up uh, straightly uh, with the CAF, the, the ACAF, the CAF uh, for uh, the CAF competition. Yes. Supposed to play with El of Tripoli in Libya. After that, supposed to play with Gomaya in Kenya. So I know the, the intensity there. You know the system. Yeah, I know the system. I know okay. the intensity. Okay. You, so <laughs> you yeah. have nominated yourself to be called. Yeah, yeah, for, okay. for sure, for sure. But <laughs> my apart but, from you, who no, should but, I play but, but otherwise, I'm seeing good player inside this competition. Yeah. I'm seeing good player. Uh, many guys that play so well. Uh, when I'm watching the game, I'm watching my position in the middle of the park. Yes. Uh, the way they are playing, the way they are moving, the way they are giving ball, the way they are thinking. Uh, so, so that's it. But uh, I'm seeing myself in front. <laughs> yeah, about Manchester United for sure. Manchester United, yeah, you for see. Sure. Okay, and Manchester United uh, management, they are watching us live on YouTube. Make sure you sign. Tanga is a good midfielder. You need to watch some of his video. You'll be amazed the talent which we have on board this particular edition. Now let's dive into the various teams at the uh, quarterfinals uh, to look at uh, them. When I call it a, 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 a game, you give me your score. Uh, Nigeria, Angola, which score do you see, Mr. Tanga? That will be a tight game because Angola is a team we're playing well for sure. But I'm giving a win to, to Nigeria because they are strong. They are strong, they are hard. Mm -hmm. uh, they can give a hard time to the Angola side. So it's possible for a win uh, to Nigeria to have something like uh, two new or two one down, something like that. Okay, two one. Two one. <laughs> Noted. Two one to two Nigeria, one. Angola. Um, Kevin, South Africa. I'll give you a win to Kevin. Uh, they are they are knocking well. Yeah, Kevin. They are knocking well. They are keeping well the ball. They are so confident. Mm, even South Africa, they are doing well. They are doing so well. But the uh, the difference in, in this game, this particular game. It's about the speed. Yeah. It's, about, yeah, it's about speed. Because um, when I'm seeing that game, South Africa will put a lot of speed and a lot of power inside that game. That will be, can be an advantage for them. So South Africa can, 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 win, can, take, uh, can, can win and take advantage of this game. Okay. And you, Samuel, the big game, the fixture, uh, Nigeria, Angola. <laughs> Who do you give? In fact, that question, I already know the answer. <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me a scoreline and tell me why do you think Nigeria will win uh, such margin? No, I believe that uh, Nigerians are, are preparing for the, for the game. As I said before, it's going to be a very tough one because they know the people that are playing with. Even though Angola, they don't have any, any football history. Yes. You understand? They don't have any football history. Even the Kevedians are even more bitter than them, you understand. So, but now, according to what they have played so far, yes. they are they are coming very very faster, and uh, I believe that one day they will surely shine, but not on our head. They won't shine on our head. <laughs> so, as he have said here, I'm giving them two goals to one favor favor to the super ego. No, this. Okay, then the next game, uh, that of South Africa versus Kevet. How do you see that game? Ah, that, that game is going to be very, very tough. But uh, I, I believe that uh, the game might end in a uh, in penalty or uh, shootout. Yeah. Penalty. Yeah. <laughs> that will be a difficult one, eh? Yeah, it's going to be a difficult one because none of them will, will agree for another person to score. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Okay, apart from uh, that uh, particular game, uh, which other game do you think is uh, top in this uh, particular fixture? You know, uh, we have a host nation still in the competition. Uh, but if it enters a penalty shootout, yeah. they will defeat the Ivorians. The Ivorians. Yeah. So Ivorians should just free for their... Uh, but what the I can say about that game is what? GA Congo... Uh, they have the same, uh, the same, uh, the same style of playing, like Cap Verde. So they are knocking well, they are keeping well, they bought their confidence. Yeah. So they can also score a lot of goals. But uh, if only, uh, the Ivory side can do also the same, but they are playing with the 12th man. <laughs> I, do, I, I think you understand the 12th man. Yeah. When you are playing with the 12 men, maybe there's something that you have to uh, you have to say concerning this number 12 men that you're talking about. Maybe you will say it at the back side of the camera. <laughs> uh, but, uh, point of correction to note that um, the information is like that uh, Mali will be playing South Africa and Cote d'Ivoire will be playing uh, that is Cape Verde. Yes, that is the correct fixture. Okay. Yes. And uh, the, the previous one came before the last games in the group. So uh, that's how we look looking it. So, who do you think will get in the game? Uh, Cote d'Ivoire versus Mali, and that's a difficult one eh? because Mali probably is very very strong. Yeah, Cote d'Ivoire will boot out defending champions Senegal. Oh, it's going to be very tough. As this, my brother have said before. Uh, they will also have home advantage. What makes the football or what makes the competition to be more sweeter and more interested till now is because the Ivorians are still in the competition. Yes. And believe it or not, you will see how their, their supporters, their fans are going to fill the, the stadium. That enough is going to give them more energy for them to play. To play you understand? Yes. Even if they have to win, the Malians are going to, they are going to stress them up if they are going to win. But it's not going to be easy though, but they will surely have a home advantage. A home advantage. Okay, Guinea, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Tanga, uh, scoreline for the game. Guinea. Guinea is a team that was in the same group with the Indomitable Lions. I want to talk about football. Firstly, I'm looking the way you are playing. Mm -hmm. Guinea are playing well. Yeah, they are playing well. Yes, compared to the Democratic Republic of Congo, who fired out Egypt. Even the Democratic Congo, they say they are playing also so well. Uh, so. I don't even know what to say, but it's possible for a win uh, for GSC. Okay. GSC can, can, can do the job, can, can take advantage of this game. Uh, <laughs> GSC can take advantage of this game. You know, this game yeah, the way sure. the boys of, uh, from the GRC, the way they came to this particular competition, uh, it shows that they really came prepared. So I watched a short video, you know, the Congolese, the love fashion. And the mm. arrival announced that the Congo is here around and they would not like to go back without the, the uh, tournament, the trophy, as uh, we are seeing the competition is getting more warmer or more hotter mm. and hotter. Okay, the last round uh, before we go, yeah, last word to the Super Eagles, your team, any word for the players, the coach, the fans, Nigerians back home as a whole? All right, um, you know. When it comes to supporting in a, supporting the, the players in the pitch yes. in Africa, let it not be that I'm bragging. If you want to name the people that are top supporters or people that come with their full uh, top uh, supporters, it's Nigeria. If you listen to any Nigeria match, there's this particular song that you used to hear and drum, that they used to sing in my, in my local dialect. They used to sing it. Nalo, nalo, I gave women. That means that you should continue working because victory is assured. And super egos hearing that drums alone help them and give them the hope that they will make it. But I believe that uh, uh, 
the Lord is on our side. Mm -hmm. As I have told you before, that this cup, I said Senegal, Cameroon, Africos, and Nigeria. Two are out and two are left. Yes. Don't forget my prediction. Two <laughs> are still. <laughs> two are left. <laughs> two are left. <laughs> and those two. <laughs> Among the remaining two, mm -hmm. one is taking the trophy. Yeah. That will be a very difficult one. Eh? This particular stage of the competition, I tell you, is really difficult. <laughs> Uh, you have something there for me. We have a slight differences here with the fixtures. Let me just have it. You okay? We have Mali versus Ivory Coast. That is where we're missing Mali versus Ivory Coast in the quarter final. Democratic Republic of Congo versus Guinea. And uh, Cape Verde is playing South Africa. Yeah. The Angola match that's the one who got it correct. So that is how we are seeing it in the quarter finals. And uh, those th eight teams. Four will remain who will play the semi finals, then uh, the last two will play the finals. That is how we've seen it. And the way it's classified here, I will be sharing the pictures with you so that you get a, 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 a diagram of how the roads will lead to the uh, final of this particular competition. The finals will be played on the 11th of uh, February. February. And coincidentally, that day in Cameroon is a national day, the National Youth Day. So, youth in Cameroon will be celebrating a day, uh, entertained with top fixture in the African Cup of Nations, the finals. And that is how the uh, quarterfinals of the competition will look like. And uh, I'll plead the uh, indulgence for the uh, mix-up earlier on. We'll just take a rundown again. We've done it, but we'll do it again. Uh, Mali, Ivory Coast. Mali, Ivory Coast. The score line? 2-1. Two 2-1. One. Two one. For Ivory Coast. Uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Guinea. For the favor of yes. okay, Congo going to the semi final, probably to Tanga, South Africa, Kevet, Tonyo, the favor of South Africa, SA, then Angola, Nigeria, Nigeria, of course, carry the day. Wanyo. Am I right somewhere? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Even though it won't be easy, but although it's a game of uh, football, before you continue, you know, you know one thing about Super Eagles uh, series, their death right. Every edition of the competition, they are always in the quarterfinals, always in the quarter. Either they know they have. So, <laughs> anyhow, anything happen, we know that. Yeah, it's, anything it's, can it's happen. Normal for anything can happen. Yeah. Okay. If, even your coach said that. C'est lui qui croit qu'il n'est pas à danger. C'est plutôt lui qui est à danger plus que celui qui croit qu'il est à danger. Mm. You understand? Yes. So, anything can happen. <laughs> C'est le football. Oui, oui. Ça les ronds. Oui, oui. Ça se passe dans le rectangle, tout simplement. Oui, oui. Celui qui manage bien, sans aucun doute. Celui qui prend l'avantage. Parce que le tout, c'est de prendre l'avantage. Oui, oui. au début de la rencontre. Euh, fait courir son adversaire. Montre à son adversaire qu'on a un avantage, en fait, sur lui. Et c'est un peu ça, c'est casser son mental, prendre le dessus, être réaliste, concrétiser toutes les actions. Uh, et puis voilà. And uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for creating our time out of your busy schedule to make it present on board the Mervin edition of the program Talk Sport on Sami SK Football. Before we go, Samuel, say something to our followers. Um, what I have to say is that. Uh, as he have said before, just hit the subscribe button and follow him, and then also comment and share as you see this. If you see this video, and again, let's put our hands across and support our Africa. It's a game. It's just a game. Nothing. Nothing is there because I heard some people saying that it's like they are using juju to come and play. There's nothing like juju. <laughs> so it's a game. If the Ivorians win, to let them take it. If it is Nigeria win, let them take it. If it is the Kevedians or the South Africa, let them take it. Another competition is coming. Let the best team carry the call. One thing remains constant that it remains in Africa. Okay. <laughs> Last words. Bref, c'est un plaisir en fait d'être ici et de 
de speecher en fait, de parler pour euh, Samy Aske Football. Bon, je ne peux que euh, galvaniser en fait les téléspectateurs, euh, tous les fans de foot. Euh, C'est un plaisir en fait de s'asseoir et parler football. Euh, il est bien vrai que euh, le football au Cameroun, après une déception pareille euh, durant une compétition continentale, euh, on se doit sans aucun doute de pouvoir euh, se réorganiser euh, et bosser parce que le football c'est le travail, on rêve, on travaille et ensuite on vit. Euh, le président Samuel Leto l'a si bien dit, euh, c'est la jeunesse en fait est euh, l'espoir du football camerounais à travers sa ligue, la ligue de football des jeunes du Cameroun, euh, la LFJC, euh, qui a pour président M. Djampi et pour vice M. Caramichel. Euh, qui est aussi le président de la CEF, euh, l'association des entraîneurs et encadreurs de football du Cameroun. Euh, des hommes euh, dotés d'une très grande expérience, on va dire ça comme ça. Euh, des hommes, en fait, qui peuvent faire quelque chose de bien pour ce pays. Euh, on va juste devoir euh, croire en eux, euh, les galvaniser, en les soutenant. Et il faudrait bien que nos jeunes aussi comprennent que euh, pour jouer au foot, il euh, ne faudrait pas juste euh, se lever un matin et à dire qu'on veut être footballeur. Il faudrait déjà accepter les principes, euh, les, les préceptes et concepts, on va dire ça comme ça. Parce que le football a des concepts. Il y a une conception dans toutes choses, il y a des fondamentaux, il y a une base. C'est un peu comme dans un rectangle, c'est à trois compartiments. Il y a la base, il y a la construction, ou la zone de préparation, il y a la finition par la suite. Bon, je pense que l'échelle se doit d'être croissante, tout simplement. Euh, je pense que d'ici avril, en fait, il y a un tournoi qui se prépare également, c'est la Easter Cup, euh, partie saint artelo organisée par les brasseries du Cameroun. Euh, un événement qui s'annonce vraiment du, de, euh, du grand, d'une grande société particulière, on va dire ça comme ça, euh, avec la participation de huit équipes, euh, surnommées la Champions League des jeunes au Cameroun. Euh, on retrouve des équipes... Euh, de première division, les équipes de deuxième zone également. Et sans oublier l'équipe nationale du Cameroun, les Lionceaux, on a assisté l'équipe qui participait à la Coupe du Monde de Montaigu. Mm -hmm. C'est une première et il faudrait réellement sortir, il faudrait galvaniser ces jeunes-là qui rêvent parce que grâce à eux, certainement, on aura une équipe solide demain. Une équipe qui pourra gagner encore des compétitions, nous mettre sixième étoile à la poitrine. Et pourquoi pas arriver d'une demi-finale de Coupe du Monde ou alors une finale de Coupe du Monde par la suite et élever le trophée, bien évidemment. Ça sera réellement un réel plaisir d'être la première nation africaine à élever ce trophée-là. Pourquoi pas Je pense que le Nigeria a eu à gagner en 1996 les Jeux Olympiques. Olympique. Et par la suite, en 2000, le Cameroun a suivi mmh. tout simplement l'exemple. Mmh. Bon, c'est quelque chose que... Euh, on se doit juste de rester ferme, la ferme conviction, être bosseur et puis voilà. Thank you very much, Tanga, for coming. Thank you very much, Samuel, for coming. Okay. And our uh, listeners, viewers of uh, Sami SK Football, this is where we're drawing the curtains on this particular edition of the program. Uh, I am betraying Shintum Tumioi at the central microphone at the anchor in Douala. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. We'll be leaving our contact in the description. Thank you.